Lewis out in the desert for dirt bike test. Tenere vlog update. It's doing good, liking it. So here's what I want to tell you. I got done with my long trip where I way overloaded this bike. And by overloaded, I mean I had 128 pounds of luggage on it, which is, yes, that's too much. And we'll get into the shock spring and the suspension at the end here. But what I want to tell you is the bike performed awesome. Just like we talked about in our initial impression, like all of our stuff so far in the Tenere kind of it matches this bike is exactly what you expect it to be but i'm going to kind of go over the modifications that i've done tell you where we're at and the biggest thing since the last update was the addition of the w wheels and so these are the xl rims on han hubs and they were flawless um they're heavy duty you got heavier duty spokes but the biggest thing is i went to a much more narrow rim so my rim is almost an inch narrower in the back and it allows me to run the 140 tire. Uh, I'm running the Kenda Big Blocks. And by the way, this Kenda right here, that is 1,500 miles of use. So uh, the other thing that's nice about the smaller bikes is they don't eat the tires up like the big ones. But anyways, it gives the tire a little bit more um, pointy, I'll, I'll call it narrow profile, allows it to dig in and bite. I really like the way it works off-road. It might, makes the bike feel much more lively. So really stoked on that. Uh, the other thing that was, of course, was new was all the luggage. Yeah, I used it with all that weight. It None of the bolts came loose. Everything was good. It's just like I expect Tour Tech stuff to be. We'll move on to protection. Of course, I have the, uh, I don't like to call them crash bars, maybe tip over bars. Uh, so I didn't use them, which is good maybe to, to, to hit some brush and some bugs. But uh, that way, even when I lay my bike over, I'm doing demos and stuff like that. I'm not worried about the radiators or this plastic, which is quite expensive. And then on to some of the Acherby's protection, uh, the skid plate specifically. The thing was just getting just peppered by uh, rocks <laughs> and stuff on our ride back. Uh, it performed admirably. Of course, I didn't have to use the, uh, you know, the side cover protection, which is just a nice little added bonus. Uh, the chain guide is always a good safety uh, addition to have there. So stoked on that. And man, I tell you, as far as comfort goes, I'll run through this. Probably the number one thing you want to do to a Tenere, especially if you're riding long distances, is look into some wider foot pegs. I'm running the Fast Company Impact pegs, which also have an elastomer for some additional vibration dampening inside of there. So um, really nice, but really on this side with that clutch sticking out and the narrow stock foot pegs, having this wider peg is just such a comfort thing. It really, really helps out. Uh, I'm, I'm, it, like that was my first thing I needed to do to this bike, the first mod. <laughs> so they're still on there. And then we come up to my handlebars, which are their own little um, creation. Of course, I have my SP Connect uh, phone thing. So my phone just sits on here and charges. It's vibration dampening, super nice. Plugs into a USB down there. Uh, Flex, Fast Company Flex handlebars, which just do, the, do a lot of the damping for you. Really nice. I'm running a 12 degree bend. Uh, the standard enduro 12 degree is what I run. I uh, got my nice comfy pro grip grips. Of course, the Cherby's hand guards, double take mirrors, and everything up here is pretty much mounted on ram balls uh, so that it's all movable and interchangeable. It's easy for me to make a, a quick adjustment and position in something if I want to. Uh, it just makes for a nice cockpit. And then, of course, there's the uh, gold standard of steering dampers, the Scott steering damper. Never met a bike that didn't enjoy a Scott's damper. And I've got my bar set up so that they're pretty much in a little bit, just a tad bit higher than stock height. Um, which, and then the, with the bend and everything, it's just set up just like I like it. And this makes just, you know, it makes the bike mine. And it, it, there's a lot of, there's some dollars up here on this whole handlebar setup but it is the way I want it, and that's a big part. I mean, really, the only place I'm touching the, the motorcycle is my handlebars and my foot pegs, and it's so important to have those two things right. And then we're gonna get to the other thing, that on this trip, this Seat Concepts, it's a one-piece 
rally seat. And let me tell you, we did 16 hour days and I was super comfortable because it's number one, it's taller. And I'm only 5'10", maybe 5'10 on a good day. We'll go 5'9 and three quarters. And the biggest thing here is notice, it's got all this padding and it's thick here. And then it actually grows a little bit and it's got a lot of room for your butt back there. It does raise the seat height, but think about it. <laughs> I don't ride with my feet on the ground. I'm not worried about touching the ground. And at five foot 10, this for most people will be a little bit bothersome, I think. You know, if you're just doing day-to-day -day stop and go commuting, but we were riding the bike. The biggest problem I probably was concerned with was that I way overweighted the bike, especially for the stock suspension. Was that on purpose? And I knew I needed to get springs and I didn't exactly have time to do that before I rode, but I was really happy with how the suspension worked. Um, it didn't bottom excessively. I mean, it bottomed a little bit easier than it did when it was stock, but that wasn't really a concern. We we're, you know, we're, we're adventure riding, you know, so I'm kind of careful about what I'm doing. But since I've been back, and this is the first time I've ridden this today, I have the Tour Tech suspension now. So it's a complete rear shock with a slightly larger shock body and a little bit larger shock shaft. It still has the adjustable preload on it. And then it comes with a spring, a progressive front spring. And just to get started with today, I'm pretty impressed. It, uh, it's definitely holding the bike up more. Of course, I'm riding it unloaded, just kind of giving it a shakedown. And really, that's the direction I needed to go. It would have been a lot better, especially with the weight on the rear. And right now, I'm running my preload pretty much all the way loose. So the minimum amount of preload, and it's just right. And on my on my stock shock, I had the preload completely maxed out for the luggage. And most of the time when I was just riding it recreationally, it was still most of the way in. So I think I'm in a much better spring zone. And then we'll start playing with this shock because it has high and low speed compression and come to a setting. But the settings that I talked about in one of my earlier vlogs were the clicker settings that I ran even when I was fully loaded, just I just maxed out the shock preload at that point. So again, oh, and don't forget about the Acherbys, the big tank. So that was a nice addition, uh, six gallons-ish. I still don't have an exact figure, but on a ride with my uh, flash DCU, which I'm still working on to get just right, and everything else, 45 miles a gallon. So that's putting us at like 200 and, 50 safe miles um, when we're out roaming around in the desert between gas stations, <laughs> which sometimes can be really far apart. So that's the update on the Tenere. Uh, let me know if you are curious about some of the stuff. Like I said, I will get more info on the ECU flash because I still want to do, it didn't cure exactly what I wanted it to. And since I didn't have my, <laughs> I didn't have this guy, my wheel sensor on the front rotor, I wasn't actually able to do any of the mileage figures through the computer. We were just doing it based on using the GPS odometer and then how much fuel, fuel we use. So the computer up here, this guy here, was kind of uh, kind of useless at that point. So uh, from the beautiful Nevada desert, my name is Jimmy Lewis and uh, we'll see you out in the trail. Cheers.